Modding your mechanical keyboard can be quite fun. I've made a bunch of videos on those. But if you have a fresh keyboard and you don't know where to start, well, this video can be a follow along guide for you. We'll do the easiest and fastest mods that can give you drastic changes in your keyboard's experience without having to desolder your switches. Let's start by removing the keycaps and the screws. If you have this exact keyboard as me, the Cosmic Byte GK16 or 18, you'll find screws between the function keys, namely the F10 and F11, one between F6 and F7, one between F2 and F3, between the scroll lock and the pause break all the way to the right, between the function and alt keys, between the windows and the control keys, another one between the down and the right arrow, and one more in between the tab key and Q. It'll be really easy if you have a keycap puller with you, but if not, you can use a simple plastic tool or even your own screwdriver to nudge the keycaps up. Take it slow and just be gentle unless you'll end up damaging them. That's what she said. Now that all the screws are away, we can open up the keyboard and do two modifications. One is adding some foam and secondly a tape mod. Now it's ideal to use a thick tape like double sided tape or masking tape here, but you can use any. I'll just reuse the one that I had in my previous keyboard just to show you. Tape mod is my favorite way of reducing vibrations on your keyboard. It's really easy to do, doesn't take a lot of work and delivers instant results. Just entirely cover the back of the PCB and you can add another layer on the back panel as well and fill up any gap that's left between the back panel and the PCB with a thin layer of foam. You can use any type of foam but make sure that it's not too soft otherwise it may not work as well. You can even poke small holes in the foam so that the screw holes are not blocked and you can now put everything back together. Just place the top PCB and the board on top of the back panel. It may take a little force to get them in place because now there's additional substance in between those two. It may seem a little tense at first but don't worry, once you screw it in, it'll all fit in just fine. If it doesn't fit at all, then maybe you have used too much foam so you can reduce that a little bit. But once it fits in place, well you're done with two mods already, the foam mod and the tape mod. That was pretty easy, right? Well now comes the part where things can get a little sticky. We'll be lubricating the switches and the stabilizers to make them feel smoother and reduce the rattling noise. If you have this exact keyboard, one of the biggest L's you'll have to face is the poor quality stabilizers. They are rattly and they make a lot of noise. Let's fix that. Now the ideal solution would be to clip the stabilizers and do a band-aid mod, but we're not going to be doing anything complicated and just to get you started, lubing would be good enough. But let's start with the switches first. There are a lot of good quality loops that you can use. I use this particular silicone gel. If you'd like to use the same, I'll leave it in the description along with a few others. Just dip your brush in and take a very thin layer. You need not apply too much for the switches. They are already pretty smooth. Just apply a very thin layer on either sides of the switches and then push them in a little bit with the back of the brush. Again, this is not the right way to do it, but it's the simplest and easiest way to give you results. Now you have to do that for all of these individual switches one by one. It'll take a little bit of time and patience, but trust me, it'll be worth it. This is like a one-time thing and you don't have to do this every week or every month. So after a while, once you're done with all the switches, now we can focus on the stabilizers. Now on most keyboards, including this one, there are five sets of stabilizers. They are meant to stabilize these larger keys like the spacebar, shift, enter, etc. They have a thin metal piece running across both of those standoffs which make those rattling noise. We can reduce that rattling quite a bit by applying a thick layer of silicone lube on top of them. But you'll have to hold those plastic thingies up so you can reach that metal thing on the bottom. So it'll help if you have a tweezer or something. So you can take a thick layer of lube on your brushes and then shove them on those metal pieces. You don't have to be careful or precise here because these are not as delicate as switches. So you pinch and hold up one end with your tweezers and insert the brush with the lube on the other end. That sounds dirty. Our goal is to get a thick layer of lube in between that metal stabilizer and the top metal plate. So that when the stabilizers are moving with the switches, they don't make as much noise. And it certainly makes an audible difference. The shift stabilizers here are lubed and the enter key ones are not lubed. Take a listen. I think you can tell that once they are lubricated, they don't make as much rattling noise. Just do the same for all the other stabs and sure enough, they will sound better. Now again, you can definitely desolder them and modify them even further, but this is good enough to get you started. And just like that, you have completed 4 easy mods without even desoldering your switches. Your keys and stabilizers are lubricated, which means they'll feel smoother when you work on them. 
and the inserted foam along with the tape should make sure that your keyboard doesn't produce as much reverb when it's on the table. Another easy way to reduce a lot of reverb is to use a thick desk mat, you know, one of those computer mats that you get for your table. But this is plenty good to be used every day as it is. Now the next step of course will be to upgrade the keycaps to something better because the included ABS keycaps are pretty hollow so they don't sound that great. Now there are many PBT keycaps available which are a little bit thicker. That means they sound better and they reduce vibrations even on their own. They are generally quite expensive but I'll leave a link to some affordable ones I have found in the description. But it's okay if you just want to use the stock keycaps as well. They are quite good. Now you can stop here but some keyboards like this one has a pretty bold looking logo there. Some people who wanted a clean matte finish may not like that logo, so you can remove it in certain cases. In this particular Cosmic Byte GK18 keyboard, you can of course remove that logo. I have done that before already. It may not be the best way, but the way I did it was to use a solution of rubbing alcohol and some acetic circa. And it works quite well as you can see from my past video. Now I'm not gonna remove the logo completely on this one because I'm passing this on to one of you. One of you purchased it from me, so yeah, this is going to you and I'll be looking for a new one. I usually sell my gadgets for like half price, so if you'd like to receive some of those in your inbox, then you can definitely join our Discord server. But I think it's a good place to stop here. These four basic mods are plenty. So let's take a listen now to these automated linear switches after all these mods. If you follow along these mods in this video, you can tell for yourself firsthand that it definitely feels much better now. And that's it. Easiest mods ever, right? So now that I'm officially looking for a new keyboard, let me know what suggestions you have that I should check out next. As you might know, I'm not a big fan of clicky blue switches, so please don't recommend those. I usually go for tactile browns or linear reds and blacks. I'm curious to check out some Gatoron options. It might be interesting to compare them to Ottimo's. I'm curious to see what your suggestions will be, so leave them in the comments. And if you want to send some links to me, then you can DM me on Discord. Link is in the description.